show you the tracks that I cut my teeth on, where I learned to four wheel drive. With my Hilux when it was bog stock on little tires. This is Hilux country, mate. But while we're doing it, we're gonna be showing you guys a few tips and tricks you need to know if you wanna give tough tracks a go yourself in your four wheel drive. We'll be showing you the right way to do things as well as the wrong way. Now I'll try and drive it the right way without slipping in. Well, mate, our epic, tough wheeling New South Wales adventure continues, and this time we're in Western New South Wales in Lithgow. Mate, this is where I very first learned to fall drive a very long time ago. How cool is that, mate? Not only is there some cool looking tracks here by the looks, but the views, mate, they're blowing me away. I'm keen to have a look around. It's absolutely stunning up here, mate, but before we get into a few tips and tricks, what do you reckon we uh, poke our noses up a short little track that's up ahead to uh, warm ourselves up to Lithgow and get into some wheeling? Oh mate, you don't have to twist my arm for a little warm up track, let's do it. Roger that mate, you're gonna love it here, it's awesome. Let's go. This is the pipeline track. Anyone who's grown up within a few hours of Sydney and learnt to wheel in Lithgow will know this track well. The perfect warm up for today's wheeling. Mate, uh, this trail, I've driven it a lot, and every time I come back, it just gets a little bit more wild, and it looks like the step in front of me's gotten a bit more intense. Might have to uh, maybe even pack this one, but we'll see how we go, eh? I'll try and come high up that, see what happens. Come on, climb, climb, there we go. You didn't want that, but we got there in the end. Ah. Oh. Now, steer hard left there if you can. I might just slip in. Don't go back much further though. And that, yeah, steer hard left when you come forward. Just try and stay out of the rut, but it's a big step here. Probably not that far left, you can steer right. Oh. You might be, you might be stuck between a rock and a hard place. I thought it wanted it for a second then. Yeah, go right now. It's probably hard right. It's a big rock step on the left-hand side. It's actually undercut and Jock's back wheel was in the air just then. So we're gonna back him back, get him a bit squarer and probably pack it. That'll do you, I reckon, mate. If you're ever gonna be rock packing under cars like this, this is a pretty red hot situation. Make sure the bloke inside knows you're getting under his car He's either on the brakes that the car's turned off. In this case, we're pretty lucky. The back of the pony is against the back. You can't actually go back. It just feels wrong. But it's safety, safety is key when you're out in the bush. It's going to take a long time for an ambulance to get you here if you get squashed. Oh, it felt like I wanted it there. Yeah, maybe like a tiny bit more of a bossy bop. It was on the rock and I seen it roll out. All right, going to switch. Yeah. I'm already, I'm pretty much all, almost up the step. Yeah, it won't be much of a winch. Nah, just a little, just to pull the bar up. Yeah. Even with a few rocks packed under the rear, my 33s just aren't big enough to get up the step. With the bones up on the end of a winch line, it's time to redeem myself. Bit of local knowledge coming into play here. I thought we were driving the big step, but he's halfway around it. Up like it's nothing. Just doing a little roll back there around this corner. Grab claw. Oh, very nice. Huh? Jock's gonna be pretty upset with me. I've done a hell of a lot of packing while I've been walking back down, but Daryl, he's not quite as nimble as a little low highlight. I still don't think it's going to help me. I think it's going to flick out and Jock's going to have to winch me out, but there's no harm in trying. I'm not sure which line to take first. There's some big holes at the front. Oh, yep. Yep, that's nice. Almost! Almost! I probably just spent out all my rocks too. Nah, most of them are still there because you kind of missed them. Yeah. I packed it to go left, but I thought I'd just try right first. Yeah. 
So what I'm going to do here is just a little Vossi bop. It's when you you got rocks and they're loose and you want to give it a bit of a bop but not too much. So it's called a Vossi bop. <laughs> As soon as you're up, you backed off. But I wasn't even up then and my foot was off the pedal. And uh, thanks to all my rock packing. I don't think Jock's gonna be over that one. Well, Jesse drove straight up that. That's a prime example of if you put the effort in and <laughs> pack the rocks first, then you've got a higher chance of driving it. I just got up to it and started driving it because I'm lazy and I stayed in the car and it's cold. Uh, Jesse did a way better job of packing, a way better job of driving, and he has a better car than me. But don't tell him I said that. I'm getting towed up. This is great, let's keep wheeling. Oh, the bonus line didn't work for you there, mate. Yeah, a little bit more to the right. I was trying to not drive the chicken track like Jock did. Whoa, turn it up. <laughs> this first tip comes to driving deep ruts, and the name of it actually comes from our good mate, Mad Matt. He called it following the water, and it's the best way to describe it. When you're in deep ruts like this, you wanna keep where the water runs in the center of your vehicle, which sometimes means staying high in the ruts, which can be a bit scary, but by doing that, you'll keep your vehicle nice and level. The reason it's not a good idea to go into the ruts is because you get your vehicle on all sorts of angles. You can do panel damage and brake stuff. This one's a little bit tricky to do it on, but one little thing people commonly get wrong is when the front wheels get past, they start to steer. So what you've actually got to do is drive your front past the hole. You want to keep your back wheels out. And as you can see, the front tire has gone past the hole before he started to turn. That's kept the axles level and tires on the ground for most of the drive. Yeah, so pretty much what you want to do, you sort of want to stay high and turn late and that also just basically keeps the back wheels level. If, if you've got an unlocked vehicle, you only need two wheels level on the back. Your front might go in the end, and as soon as your back's about to get that hole, you do the zigzag. And even if you drop in, it's not the end of the world. As long as that axle is flat, you can have drive both wheels. So this mega rut here will show you a better example of keeping your tires high. It was a little bit tight down there, but we wanted to show you the water line because you can actually see water in the bottom of it. This one, for example, Jesse's gonna keep his tire high up on that right bank, see? That's higher than you'd think you'd need to go but it helps keep your rear up as well. Now he's gonna to start to turn left. And see how high his right tire is up on the bank? And because he's turned later, it means that his rear right tire is also gonna climb the bank. And look how high he is there. Now he'll come a little bit of left hand down, just a little bit, see, that's all you need. And that's a perfect example of what we mean. Jesse drove that really well. And you can see he kept his front tires up nice and high and that allowed the back tires to follow suit. If he turned too early, if he didn't follow the water, he could slip his back tires in and that's where he'd get crossed up like he saw before. Mate, you drove that really well. With big wide Darrell through, it's time to see how the pony goes. You can see here my back left tire dropped into the same hole as Jesse and is picking up a wheel lift. However, the rear axle is still staying level through the drive. And it's true, Jock Fashion. <laughs> <laughs> now I'll try and drive it the right way without slipping in. <laughs> oh well, we told you we'd show you what to do and what not to do, and that is not the line. <laughs> What happened there is um, Jock's car's obviously a little bit narrower and it just slipped in that time. So he backed back and got over, it wasn't even 50 mil and the tire just grabbed on. You see it grabbing here and pulled up the side. Just a little readjust like that first time I came through too low. And that, that goes to show like even when you, if you do get the wrong line in ruts like this, you're reasonably, be reasonably safe. You can kind of, you've got a bank to hold you. So you can usually back up and have another go. You just need to be conscious of panels. But in that case, I was able to just readjust, move my bum over, yeah. like 50 mil, and then away I went. If you got something like this near your house, it's perfect to learn your car. Like you said, you can play around in these ruts for hours and not hurt your car. Mm -hmm. And it's also good to pick the wrong line and learn the tipping point of your car, because yep. some of those tighter ruts, you do have to pick the front wheel to get the back to drive through. Seat time. Yeah. 
Seat time over shed time any day. Find a rut like this and drive it all day. Feel the tip point of your car, pick the wrong line, pick the right line. Speaking of seat time, mate, let's go wheel another track. Sounds good. Jesse and I can't get enough of tough wheeling. What do you guys at home reckon? Is tough wheeling your favourite sort of four-wheel driving? Let us know in the comments below. Around the next corner, we're pointing our noses up the famous Spanish Steps. A fun, rocky climb full of diff-banging, slider-scraping rocks that will put the clearance of any vehicle to the test. Do you want to just give the old tail shaft a look? Yeah, it's just missing. A go have a go? Yeah. Alright. Have a go. That's all she needed. With the pony just scraping up, let's see how Jesse goes in Big Daryl. What you want to do on rock steps is nose up nice and slow. Pull bars in here, so we're going to accelerate a little bit. Go up, give it a feel. See if anything's going to hit real bad. And just like that, you can see why it's so important to crawl up through rock steps. Put your back back and give it a little wood pop this Yeah, just a little bit of wood, not too much yeah. wood. I don't have too much wood, but we are bellying out, so. With a quick check of the vitals underneath, Jesse should walk up with a little bump. Find that bite point of the clutch, give it a little rev, spool up the carby. And that was a bit rough, but I literally backed off as the car rolled up. So, yeah. Nice. We're just climbing our way along this ridge line and we've come across a few big rock steps. And this is pretty undercut, this one here. So what we're gonna do is just gonna nose jock up and he's not gonna bop it the first time. We're just gonna nose up and see if he's gonna touch his tail shaft and stuff under the car. And then we'll work out whether he gives you a little bump or we do a bit of packing. So uh, let's bring him up and see how he goes. Oh, there's quite an undercut little step. One of my bull bar's gonna hit it first, maybe. No, I reckon your bull bar should clear. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, front's up. Tail shaft's gonna get close, I think, but I can't. With the tail shaft getting a little too close for comfort, we're gonna pack a few rocks to give the pones a little more clearance. As you saw just then, Jock nosed up to this rock step and it's a bit undercut. He actually hit the front of his fuel tank and his tail shaft there. So what we've done, we've rolled him back a little bit. I've packed a few rocks in and I'm actually gonna go and get the treads and make a bit of a rent. But if you don't have treads on you, there's nothing wrong with a bit of old fashioned rock packing. A few rocks here makes a massive difference on a rock step like this. You'll notice a bit of a trend on this trip also. Whenever the rock stacking's got to be done, Chuck's now what have you seen? I think he's reading a book in there. Yeah, this way a tiny bit. That, that's enough, yeah. Straight up, baby. That's all she needed. How good's that? Good packing, Jesse. Now, hopefully, because we've done so much rock packing and we've got the treads out, I should be able to idle this, but I still might give the back a little bit of a bop just so it doesn't spit out the treads and the rocks. Are they pretty off? Nah, it's, you're on them now. It's like a highway. Yeah, it is, eh? We've built a road. That rock packing is gonna upset a lot of people, but I don't see the point of sitting there all day smashing my chassis against our rock set. Wow, he made that look easy. Just goes to show, just put a bit of time into packing the track before you drive it, and you'll walk up it. With an epic day of wheeling under our belts and a few tips and tricks, it's time to head to one of my favourite campsites. That was a sensational day, showing Jesse around some of my favourite tracks that I learned to four-wheel drive on a very long time ago. But now, I thought I'd treat him to one of the most epic campsites in the area. Of course, it's Lake Lyle, We've camped here before, it is absolutely stunning. Look at that view, I reckon Jesse's gonna be stoked. Lake Lyle is the perfect spot to set up camp and settle in for the night. And after a huge day of wheeling, we're keen to cook up a bit of a feed and call it a day.
What a beautiful spot. If you can't half tell, it got proper cold last night and it's still pretty chilly this morning, but I can think of worse ways to wake up in the morning with a spectacular view like that. The plan today is we've got a few things to do around camp before we get onto the tracks. Jesse actually noticed a bit of a knock in his front end, so he's gonna get some tools out and have a play around. I might get onto breakfast while he's doing that, and then once I'm done, if he's still going, I'm gonna throw stuff at him while he fixes his car. And then we'll get packed up and head out on the tracks for another day of wheeling, can't wait. This tire end's spinning and I just can't get enough purges on it to hold it and tighten it up. So I'm just gonna take the wheel off so I've got heaps better access. Just gonna jack it up, rip the wheel off, try and get a bit, a bit more clamping on there. Hopefully I can nip it up and put the split pin back through. With a solid feed into us, we're hooking straight into getting camp packed up and straight back to the tracks. Mate, last time I was here, this hill was completely different. The hard line was over there and this was the chicken track. Yeah, well this definitely isn't a chicken track anymore, mate. Definitely no not. Way. It's over there, they've swapped. They've done yeah, the old change, yeah. This is a bit of a choose your own adventure here, I reckon. Big time. Well, in true Jock and Jesse fashion, mate, yeah. I reckon we go this way. Straight up the guts, I reckon. Yeah. Not the hardest one, I reckon. I reckon um, maybe try and stay out of the holes, but it yeah. looks quite slippery, so you we might slip straight back in. Crawl it, don't stall it, mate. Crawl it, don't stall it. I was in second gear, not first, whoops. I remember my first time full driving. He went much like this. Little highlights just cleared it, how good? Little diff, baby. Little diff, jock diff. Now the big Bertha, big slippery one. In. You missed it by that much. That, that was pretty good if you steer this way a bit more because there was a hole that your front wheel went in and you bellied out. So if you come forward to that lock, I reckon you might get it. Beautiful, yes. mate. Beautiful. Well spotted, Jesse. That was bad. Almost feel at home here, like I'm a glass house. Some sort of big rock steps, big rutted out hills. This step was quite the doozy. Jesse's just lining up for it now, but. Uh, might jam up on the radio, because if he drives the exact line I did, I reckon he'll get up straight away. Hey Jesse, you copy mate? Yeah mate, I got you. Mate, if you literally put your tyres exactly where I put mine, you'll get up in one go. Exactly. Yeah, so where I told you to put your tyres? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just follow my line completely, and uh, up you come. Right here, I'll hold you to that mate. Let's see how we go. So I came, I straddled that hole, but he's much wider, so maybe I stitched him up. Yes. That's the go. Look at that. Nice. Oh no, Mega Patrol this. He's climbing out early. See, I climbed out late. You can see where my tire tracks, tracks were and I struggled to get out of that bit. He's climbing out early so he can get higher and his back left tire won't fall in this hole like mine did. So I reckon he'll probably actually drive this better than me, but we'll see. He will. Yeah, see that? See how his back left tyre isn't going to go in this hole? Because he's going to come up and he's going to steer left now. No, he's not. Now. Yeah, he drove that better than me. Beautiful. A little bit of a bop to get the back up. Let's drive back to crawling. I don't know why I tell him to drive certain spots. He drives better than me anyway. Jesse, if you're watching this, because you're over there and you can't hear me, stop out driving me. <laughs> With the first step done, it's time to point the noses up to the next one. There we go. Got it. Slippery. Double stack and he's gone a little bit too far right. It's sort of on the chicken track there. <laughs> wow. I was not expecting that. Now that Jesse's seen how the pony did it, let's see how Big Daryl goes. Hey, you can come back a little bit more if you want, and you're steering left. 
Yeah, well, that's why I steered you to sort of bounce yeah. out, but... But as you come up, like, you're kind of trying to climb another bank, like, your tires are pretty good there. Yeah. See how you go. Radio. There you go. Oh, you put a tire off the beat, mate. Did I? Actually? Yeah. With the tire off the bead on Daryl and the position it's currently in, we're going to give it a quick winch to put it in a better position to fix. We made it. We're on a bit of a hill here and we're going to jack the car. Obviously it is in four wheel drive and in gear, but we've just left the winch connected just for an extra safety measure. Because you, once you lift the wheel, especially if you don't have diff locks in your car, all the drive is going to go to that wheel and it's going to want to spin. So your car may roll, depending on what the handbrake picks up on. So yeah, even if you haven't been winching and you're on a hill and you need to work on your car and you've got a winch or even a strap, just get the strap tight and roll back and uh, it's just a whole nother measure of safety. You can never be too safe out in the bush. Jesse's jacked the vehicle up. The reason you want to do that is because when you reseat the bead, you want the bead to be nice and even and the easiest way to do that is to have the tyre in the air. Once you've done that, you want to make sure that the sealing surface between the tyre and the wheel is clean of all dirt and debris, which we've already done. And you can see here how it's sitting even. The last thing to do is pump it full of air. Now, because it's sitting pretty good, it means that I can just hold that valve on because you want that valve behind the bead of the tire so air actually goes in there. If you're struggling with that bit, there's a couple of tricks you can do. For example, one of them is you can actually get a ratchet strap around the tire and just ratchet the tire to push the bead out a bit more, just enough to try and get air in there. There's a few little tips and tricks like that, but fortunately this one should pop on almost too easy. <laughs> almost too easy, which is good. In three, you're never ready for this Two. bit. Yeah. One. One. <laughs> and there you go. With the tire back on the bead, it's straight into the next challenge. This next little tip is about driving steep stuff, which to be honest, can get pretty scary. And we've got this uh, pretty steep little rock climb here, which we thought would be the perfect example of showing you what we mean. So I guess one of the main things, and this is pretty obvious, is you want to try and avoid turning across the hill as much as possible. Sometimes that's unavoidable, but in this case, the track goes along and then the hill's up to my right. What I can do is come up to him and then there's nothing wrong with just getting your nose in a good position, having a little roll back like that, and then just squaring the nose up a bit more. And what that'll allow is you're just nice and straight. And then if you do slip off line, like for example, you're coming up a rock step or something like that and the vehicle kind of bounces to the left or right, you obviously want to turn to the opposite direction, it's bounced. So for example, if it bounces left, you want to start to steer right so you can drive up and keep your nose pointing uphill. I've got my front locker on and I'm in second gear because of the reduction gears and I'm just going to nose up to this step here. Go on, climb for me, climb for me. See there, the nose started pointing left and I started steering right. Like that, see that? And that's where it can get pear-shaped if you don't start to correct it. If you keep steering left, it's going to keep going over and over and that's where it can get scary. Okay, next thing. I'm on the hill, I've got the front upper step and now the rear needs to climb that as well. This can be a little bit daunting. You're on a hill, you're on the brakes, you've got your clutch here. This is much more um, relevant to manual vehicles with autos. You can kind of stall it up a bit. But what I want to do is I want to back up a bit. I'm using the brake here but the brakes on this vehicle, because they're old, aren't very good. So I'm also just going to use the clutch there a bit, just to help me. And now you can hear the vehicle's kind of loaded up there. That's me slowly letting my foot off the clutch, and it's not going anywhere. You don't want to stay here forever, but it just helps you get a start. Now what I want to do is find the choke point there, where it's going to hold the vehicle enough that I can let my foot off the brake, my foot's off the brake. Give it a rev. And up we go. And with ones like this, where there's lots of little steps, it's easy to get thrown off line, like right now. <laughs> but if you remember to always try and keep your nose pointed uphill as much as you can, it'll really help. Let's see how Jesse goes up. He might take a harder line than me. See, there's a prime example. Jesse's steering up the hill, but he'll start to turn right and down because he wants to keep his nose pointed this way. And up he goes. And I guess there's probably one more thing to mention was I kind of stopped at that step and let my foot off the clutch. That's easier to do when you have low gearing. Yeah, definitely. Not always yeah. possible. Yeah. But uh, in any case, you can always kind of back back down and have another yeah. go. Yeah, yeah. 
maybe practice practice that before you get in a big hill if you don't yeah. have production gear and yeah. stuff. And also, another thing that sort of got me there, look ahead. I forgot what was in front of me there and I didn't know what was there. So, you know, you're at an obstacle and you're thinking about that. Look ahead before you get to the next one because you want to know what's there and which line to pick. Bunch of good tips there, mate, but uh, this one keeps on going, so how about we hook in? Sounds good to me. Let's do it. This looks like a gnarly little double step and there's heaps of water on it. I don't know how my little 33s are gonna go, but we'll give it a red hot crack. I have another go. That's so slippery, man. You notice inside, Jock's holding his tongue in a position and it's, it's very precise with Jock's driving. You've got to hold your tongue right. He's not getting up, so I think he's not holding his tongue right. But uh, I have one more go. We'll give him one more no more. We might have to get the winch out. I don't know if I'll get up this, man. It's pretty slippery. Nah, you might need a little winch. Well, I gave it a couple of goes. I can just a quick winch. You won't need much. Just enough to pull me over that double step and I should be able to drive the rest. I suppose this probably is a good time to talk about another tip, winching on tough stuff. Pretty obvious one, always, you know, be safe. Don't be a peanut when it comes to winching, make sure people are standing well away, using proper rate of recovery gear, all that good stuff. But I guess the one thing that we like to do is something we call trust your button. What does that mean? Well, it's knowing when to help the winch with driving and knowing when to trust your button. Just let the winch do the work because there'll be sometimes when you're winching and it's on a real gnarly angle and you need to keep tension on the winch rope to help the car stay level. And then there's sometimes where you're pulling up against like a big rock step or something and you need to help the winch along to just to take a bit of load off it. It's knowing those differences that'll make or break a recovery really. A prime example would be the other day in the Wadigans when I was on a really gnarly angle, I actually backed off and I wasn't really driving at all. I was right in the clutch a bit and I had my foot on the brake just to slow the vehicle down to keep tension on that winch rope because if I didn't, vehicle could have fallen over. It's knowing when to help the winch along and it's knowing when to trust in your winch when you're on a gnarly hill that can make the biggest difference. And of course, like I said at the start, always be safe. Jesse's well out of the way. I think we're good. So I'm gonna take tension up on the winch there and hear that, hear how it's really bogging down. Now I start to help it a bit. You hear it, it's under less load. Now I help a bit more. Now I'll let the winch catch up. That's all it needed. That wasn't a big winch, it was just to pull me up the step. But yeah, trust your button. I can might have a drive from there, mate. Well, you got further than me, mate. Oh, did I? I was going to say it was the same spot. Oh, is it? Oh, yeah, maybe it is. I'm not sure. Let's see what I can do. Sometimes you just got to bring out your inner Queenslander, mate. Ah, celebrated too early, brother. What happened, Mr. Drifter? I went back to New South Wales, mate. I put it back in first gear. Yeah, fair enough. Well, you've already tailed me up, mate. I had to winch up that step. I'll see how you know. I'll try a little second bop. Oh, it could have me. It could have me. Super slippery, this hill. Super slippery. Yeah! I thought this track would get Jesse, but he drove it well. Even when he diffed out, he didn't give up and I had to winch. So I think he wins this track, but little does he know, next up, just around the corner there or over the hill is the famous Moon Rock. Anyone who's wheeled in Lithgow before will know what I'm talking about and it's a doozy. Jesse doesn't like those big rock steps where if you mess up, you'll roll down to the bottom. He gets a little bit nervous on them and I reckon Moon Rock will put the wind up him as it's done many four drivers over the years, including me, every time I drive it. Let's get up there. 
I'm told this is the famous moon rock and it's sort of, it's, it's round like a moon. So we're just discussing lines with Jock and we sort of want to have the car in the middle. We want to go either side because then when you go up, it's sort of going to get a bit dancy and a bit sketchy. So we're going to try and line him up for the middle and see how we go. But this is a big step. It's quite undercut at the bottom for little tires. Maybe a bit of packing, maybe a bit of bunty, but uh, we'll bring the pony up and see how we go. Go that way a little bit more. Yeah, come forward to that. Go from there. What do you reckon? Give it a go, it's gonna be pretty wild. Yeah, it will be. We'll see what happens. There's a big hole on that side. Wow! Come on, man. Moon rock. I'll tell you what. You wouldn't have wanted to back off of that situation. That was scary. I'm no, I just looked at you then. <laughs> Chuck looked at me, I looked at him, we were both scared, but he did the right thing and he stayed on it. That would have been sketchy to go back from, especially in that car, because the amount of brakes it's got is uh, rhymes with zero. Oh, there are a few things on this planet I love more than the sound of tires scrabbling for traction on slick rock. The famous moon rock. Not scary at all, I'm not nervous at all. Might be lying to you, but yeah, it's quite scary and Jock made it look real easy, so if I don't make it look easy... It's way bigger when you cl get close to it, eh? Yeah, I'm scared. Yep, yep, now to me. That's pretty much you, mate. This is the scary bit. Wish me luck. Yes. And I didn't think I was gonna make it. Oh, that was sick, dude. Well done. <laughs> I was honestly scared for a second there. Yeah, I saw you face. You're like, the car oh. went this way, and I was like, oh my god. It's pretty wild, eh? When you commit, it feels yeah, pretty loose. There's nothing to catch if it goes wrong. Nah, nah. But uh, yeah, thanks, First time thanks, up to show, rock, mate. thanks to show. Thanks to show. It's done. Yeah, mate. We've done an epic track. I reckon it's time for an epic view. Sounds good to me. Follow me. All right. Mate, it has been an epic couple of days checking out some tough tracks within a couple of hours of Sydney that, as I mentioned at the start, mate, this is where I learned to four-wheel drive. How have you found it? Mate, I've loved it. Not only are the tracks tough, but the views and the scenery around here, it's unreal. It's really blown me away. Oh no, I'd love to come back down here. And I don't know why it's taken me so long to get down to New South and check out your local tracks. Good news is, mate, there's plenty more in New South Wales to check out. We've only scratched the surface, but Speaking of epic views, I've got one more little spot to show you up here and I reckon that you are going to love it. Can't think of a better way to finish our epic New South Wales tough wheeling adventure. It's just up ahead, let's go check it out. Mate, what an epic couple of days wheeling some proper tough tracks mm. in the spot where I learned to yeah, fall Yeah, it's drive. been so cool. You showed me the tracks where you cut your teeth and I'll tell you what, I'm a little bit jealous because these views are unreal. Sensational, mate. Mm. And of course, a couple of tips and tricks for you guys at home. If you want to give tracks like this a go yourself, obviously yeah. it comes down to setting up your vehicle, right? Mm. But you know how to drive ruts, how to drive rocks, yeah. hill climbs, a couple of basic winching yeah. techniques. You said there was going to be five and I've only counted four. I could be wrong, but what's the fifth one, mate? No, five. There is there five. Is five. The fifth one is you. Me? Is you. What? It what? comes down to having a good spotter and a good mate out the front of your vehicle who you trust. That's number five. Okay, yeah, radio. Hopefully those tips have helped you guys and if you've got any more that we missed or you've got something that you've learnt over the years of driving in your four-wheel drive, chuck them in the comments below. And we'll, we'll have be a bit sure, of a read, I reckon. Yeah, you might pick up a thing or two. And of course, guys, at the end of the day, the most important thing is seat time, overshed over time. time. That's it, guys. We'll catch you next time on... Four-wheel drive, 24-7.